It's also normal to experience a decrease in your appetite following surgery. To stimulate your appetite, try eating five or six smaller meals throughout the day, rather than the two or three meals you may be used to having. Also, in addition to solid foods, you may use nutritional supplements, such as Ensure or Boost, but discuss with your doctor which one is right for you. Constipation, another common problem following surgery, can be easily controlled through diet and activity. If you do become constipated, eat foods high in fiber, fruits, vegetables, and bran cereals, and drink plenty of fluids. It may be necessary to supplement your diet with an over-the-counter stool softener to ease yourself into your daily bowel movement. Take a mild laxative of your choice if you don't experience a bowel movement at least every three days. Staying active is critical to a successful and smooth recovery. Not only will you enjoy less soreness and stiffness, but you'll experience fewer complications by staying active. Let's take a moment to discuss some of the activities you're encouraged to do as well as the restrictions you should observe for the first four to six weeks of your recovery. You should continue exercising according to the diagrams given to you by the hospital's physical therapist. These exercises will help loosen your sore muscles and improve the blood flow to your injured areas. You should walk as much as you can according to the walking schedule also provided by your physical therapist. While the walking schedule should be used as a guideline, you should walk as much as you can tolerate. Remember, the more you do, the faster your strength and energy will return. In addition to physical exercise, continue your breathing exercises as you were instructed in the hospital. These breathing exercises will help strengthen your lungs and prevent pneumonia and other complications. We also encourage you to resume light chores around the home. Approved activities include preparing meals, washing and drying dishes, folding laundry, sewing, dusting, working on the computer, playing cards and board games, or other light crafts and hobbies. Remember, you must move to improve. Now that we've talked about the activities we encourage, let's review some of the restrictions we ask of our recent heart surgery patients. These restrictions are to prevent injury to your incisions, and specifically, your breastbone, which was cut during your operation. It takes your breastbone at least four to six weeks to fully grow back together and become strong again. Please observe the following restrictions for at least four to six weeks unless instructed by your surgeon otherwise. Do not drive. You may be a passenger in a vehicle as long as you place a cushion between your chest and the seat belt. You can use a firm pillow, a folded blanket, even your teddy bear. Anything semi-firm that would help minimize injury to your breastbone should you be involved in an accident. Do not lift anything over five pounds. This could include everyday objects, such as a gallon of milk, a full laundry basket, your dog, cat, or a child. Refrain from strenuous upper body activity, such as pushing or pulling vigorously as you would a lawnmower or shopping cart. Do not rake leaves, sweep, or vacuum, and do not walk your dog on a leash. Again, these restrictions should be strictly observed for four to six weeks unless instructed otherwise by your surgeon. Remember, walking and passive exercise is fine, but you should avoid aggressive arm or upper body exercise. Some other guidelines to consider include no smoking. Ask your doctor for help if this becomes a problem. You can resume sexual activity after one month but be sure to avoid strain on the chest when doing so. You may climb stairs if necessary, but please go slowly and rest frequently. Please do not travel out of the area until cleared by your surgeon. Depending on the type of work, most patients can return to the job after four to six weeks. Between four to six weeks after surgery, you'll be eligible to attend cardiac rehabilitation. The hospital and your surgeon strongly recommend that you participate in this valuable program. Not only will it help you complete a full recovery, but it will ensure that you maintain a healthy heart for the rest of your life. To attend cardiac rehab, first obtain a referral from your cardiologist, and then call the number on your discharge instructions to enroll. Cardiac rehab is usually covered by insurance, and your doctor or the cardiac rehab team can refer you to a program close to your home.
We've covered diet, activity, pain management, water retention, incision care, and cardiac rehabilitation. Let's conclude by discussing the discharge instructions you'll receive when you leave the hospital. Your discharge instructions will be tailored specifically to you. Your nurse will review these instructions with you and give you time to ask questions. Your home health care team will also refer to these instructions as they continue with your care. You should also bring these instructions along with you to your follow-up appointments so your doctors can adjust your treatment if necessary. Let's take a moment to discuss two very important areas on your discharge instructions. The first is the follow-up appointment section. Here, we will list which doctors you are to see and when you should see them. For example, we might write, call Dr. Smith, your surgeon, at 727-555-7865 to be seen in two weeks. It is then your responsibility to call and make your follow-up appointments once you get home. You should do this as soon as possible. Typically, you should see your surgeon, your cardiologist, and your family practitioner within one to three weeks following your discharge from the hospital. The second area of your discharge instructions that we'd like to discuss is the section that covers your medication, the entire second page of your discharge instructions. In this section, we will write all of the medications you are to take after being discharged. This list will include new medications as well as the medications that you were taking before your surgery that we'd like you to resume. Do not take any medications not on this list unless instructed otherwise by your doctors. This includes all over-the-counter medications such as cold remedies, herbal supplements, vitamins, and minerals. If you have a concern about any of your medications that do not appear on this list, please talk to your nurse before going home. Along with this list of medications, you'll receive all of your prescriptions. If you are prescribed a blood thinner, such as Coumadin, there will be a chart listing the date and amount of Coumadin you are to take. You will be required to have periodic blood tests to check the thinness of your blood. Your doctor will adjust your dose of Coumadin accordingly. Once again, do not hesitate to ask any questions when reviewing your discharge instructions with your nurse. This is a great opportunity to ensure that you completely understand everything you are to do in order to continue your recovery. Should you have any major concerns about your recovery, please call your surgeon, who can be reached at 727-446-2273. This number will also be provided for you in your discharge instructions. You can also rely on your home health care team for support, advice, and encouragement. We'll be sure that you have the number where they can be reached. You can also call the Patient Education Coordinator, who will be happy to address any concerns or questions you may have throughout your recovery. The Patient Education Coordinator can be reached at 727-462-7824. Finally, you are welcome to contact Mended Hearts, our volunteer group, who is here to lend support during your recovery. You'll have received their information during your stay in the hospital. Please call on them as needed. As a final thought, please remember that your recovery begins and ends with you. By taking control of your recovery, by taking proper care of yourself, and by following the directions of your cardiac team, you can expect to return to a normal, healthy lifestyle very soon. Thanks for watching, and best wishes for a speedy recovery as you take the next steps down the road to wellness.